All right, welcome back. We continue with the GMC Sierra tweet of the night, and this is from Pitt, and it's about our game time. Finally, we have one against North Carolina. It is 8 o'clock on the 23rd, so that'll be on the ACC Network brings us to Pitt because they got a big game this week. It's coming up against West Virginia down in Morgantown, 730. Phil Jerkovic looked bad, 10 of 32, only four completions in the first half the other day. Pitt looked bad altogether, and I'm leaning toward West Virginia in this game, which I didn't think I'd be saying after watching them play in the first half of their game against Duquesne. Uh, I don't know what, what to make of this game, but I do know that Pitt needs to win it badly, Pony. Well, I think the game's lost a lot of its luster with the way these two teams have started the season, right, Bob? Sure. That's why they should play at week one when both teams are 0-0 zero and zero and both have their full season ahead of them like they did last year. Uh, it's a coin flip game. The odds makers have Pitt favored by a point. Uh, I can't. I do not, under any condition, under any circumstance, trust Neil Brown, the West Virginia coach, in a big game. This is a rivalry game. The 101st time these two teams have played. And for Brown, his coaching tenure is on the line. Uh, yeah, they were a lot better against Duquesne. Slow start, but they kicked it into high gear. It is Duquesne with apologies to the Dukes. And yeah, they were terrible. Phil Jerkovic in that offense. But it was against Cincinnati, a team that usually goes to a bowl game. Two years ago, they were in the college football playoff. So I'm going to take Pitt, even in a hostile environment, where you know, Bob, they will be booing Phil Jerkovic <laughs> the entire game. A lot of pathetic human beings, as he called them. A lot of grown men will be booing him, and women will be booing him throughout that game, and maybe saying worse things than that. It is Morgantown, after all. Yeah, and no reason to react to the way he did. Uh, and I'm sure, having thought about it now, he would probably go back and change what he did. But he said what he said. Uh, six years into this, he shouldn't be saying it. Now he's a professional athlete because he basically is. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Gary in West Elizabeth is first tonight. Hey, Gary, what's up? Hi, Bob. Pony. I have a comment, then I hey, have Gary. a question. Um, every, I think everybody should chill, man. 49ers is the best defense in the business. Mm -hmm. They're going to do that to a lot of people this year. And then my question was, on that, on that, if Johnson doesn't fall down, that that that. That, that passes right on the money. And, and then I, my, what I was getting at, though, it seemed like a, lo our, a lot of our guys were slipping on the turf. I just wonder what you thought about that. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. And, you know, I'm not going to make excuses for what they are. You said San Francisco's good. Sure, they're good. But are the, are the Steelers that bad? They shouldn't be, not at this point, after doing what they did in the offseason. It was just a pathetic performance. You can use the word that Djokovic used, pathetic, uh, in every possible way. And, you know, Kenny Pickett, although I did see the video Damashak put out tonight about, you know, potentially getting thrown to the ground early. And I saw that play. I didn't think much of it. But you never know about concussions, uh, Andrew. Not making excuses. He was off the mark all day. He looked uncomfortable. He looked unsure of himself. And he didn't look at all like the quarterback we saw at the end of last year and in this preseason. Bob, I just think with the heightened awareness of concussions and given this guy's history, when you see his head bounce off the turf, and I'm guilty of this too, where they had the camera during the game was on the other sideline. So it was away from the action. It was the far side. You see him get tackled. I didn't think that his head bounced off the field as, as violently as it did from the camera that was closer to that sideline, which I saw that post too tonight. And I go, man, given everything, the spotters and independent neurologists, they should have checked him out, I think, just to make sure precautionary reasons. Don't you think rather to be safe than sorry? in those situations. Sure. If they did, we got no reporting of it after the game. Maybe Tomlin will be asked about it, but I don't think he'll be really in the mood to answer questions about that, given how coy they are about injuries. Kenny just didn't look right. Grasping at straws, trying to figure out why did a guy who looked so poised and polished in the preseason look like he was so lost and so rattled in that game, and maybe it did have something to do with that hit. Pickett talks on Wednesday. I'd love to get real answers from somebody in the next couple of days. I do know that their linebackers are very good in coverage, and that's one thing they do better than most linebackers. And I'm talking about the inside guys. They were back, and Fred Warner was all over the place. And there, were, there wasn't much room, although when there was, he was way off, and I didn't expect that. Let's go to Rob in Uniontown. Hey, Rob. Good evening. Good evening, Rob. Hey, Rob. 
comment. Who retained Matt Canada, the coach? Who right. hired Terrell Austin, the coach? Nobody ought to be reevaluating the head coach, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, you can certainly call in a question hiring over the years and some of the assistance they've had. I mean, that is his responsibility, Andrew. Uh, and he brought him back for one more year. This is it. There was no extension. So, uh, and I thought with the, the people that he brought in, and I'm still, again, it's one game. We'll see what they do with it. But, man, with the talent they have, and I do think they have talent, they've improved their offensive line, um, that, you know, it's got to be much better. If it's not now, it'll never happen. So this is on high alert for them on offense. I didn't like the, the scripting of the first series, certainly didn't like what I saw, and maybe it was the execution, everybody talks about it, but man, right off the bat, a jet sweep, and if my memory serves, there was not another one after that. No, because it was such a, uh, it was such a terrible play call. You're trying to trick the 49ers on the second play of the game and get cute and give the ball in a jet sweep to your fourth best wide receiver, and Calvin Austin had himself a nice game after Deontay Johnson went out, but come on. I mean, why not, why not go right at them with your best players? I just was so surprised by the way they attacked them. You know, they, 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 they should have built the offensive game plan around George Pickens. He is your best weapon. He is open when he is covered. He had seven targets, Bob. Allen Robinson had eight. No way. Should Allen Robinson have more footballs thrown to him in 2023 than George Pickens? I mean, it just defies logic. The way that they went about things in this game uh, was Pickett was not good. I can't say that enough. But the offensive coordinator, we see what a good offensive coach does. Look at the 49ers, how guys get wide open. We almost never see that. That's why they have no explosive plays. They had one touchdown over 20 yards last year. And I think that that's an indictment on the offensive coordinator. Well, it certainly is. And it's certainly, you know, the bottom line is look at the results and see what they've done. Uh, although I would like to put to rest this little notion that it's all systematic stuff with Brock Purdy. He looked very poised and he did things yeah, that go beyond system uh, yesterday. I agree. And he's done stuff in his first six games that no other quarterback in the NFL has ever done. We got a tweet here from Zach Williams. You can hit us up on Twitter. Uh, he says two elite quarterbacks, Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, not having good weeks. In fact, nobody in the AFC uh, North had good uh, stats whatsoever. Any of these quarterbacks this is very interesting. We got our number one Cochran go one better caller of the night, and it's Dave in Verona. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, I just want to plead to Andrew to uh, stop making predictions because you are the biggest mush I've ever heard in my entire life. Everything you predict, the opposite happens. <laughs> That's why I'm not a big prediction fan, Andrew. Every time I'm asked about I mean, it, I hate predictions. Was I wrong about this game? Absolutely, but so was the entire KDKA panel. On Sunday, not all just, of you guys not, not just picked us, the Steelers. Not just us. If you look at it all across the national level, uh, you have people talking about the Steelers as the surprise team that can get to a Super Bowl. Ryan Clark predicted that as well, along with you and Joe Starkey. I mean, I, I'm not going that far. I stuck to 10-7. and 7. I'm going to stick to it, even though I don't like predictions, uh, because I thought that made sense. They still have a lot of un- proven things and I until I see it I'm not going to totally believe it and and that that is including offensive strategy and what they do with this offense and uh, you know quite frankly I haven't seen enough and they better start getting into gear let me ask you about this game coming up Andrew on Monday night because Deshaun Watson did not look good I watched the entire game over here yesterday alongside the Steeler game Burrow looked awful can't figure out why I have to trace it to no activity I guess I don't know uh, but Deshaun Watson, I still think, is not the same quarterback. But they do run the football. In previous matchups, Kevin Stavansky has not run the football. That's their strength, and he's gone against it with the Steelers and paid a price at times. I expect now, with Cam Hayward out, that they're going to make that a high priority, even though they lost Conklin. I would think so as well, but you just said it. It's a primetime game. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs on the Browns in their $230 million quarterback. Yeah, I mean, he's just not hes not playing at that level. Can he? I don't know. We'll see. But he was good enough to win yesterday in the Battle of Ohio, 24-3. we got to take a break, come back with more. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're on seven nights a week right here at KDKA Plus, so don't go away.